OMG, that's not even my hair and I feel like crying. I feel like crying too. How is that possible? Is this why Brew was bald that month? I wonder if this will get some of those influencers to finally wear their masks in public. There have been many horror stories about COVID-19 cases, but some people shared a side effect no one would want to experience. And then I started looking uh, in the mirror and I saw some, you know, spots that are that's thinning. This is all my hair brush in one month. I've even seen or had friends that have lost their eyelashes. Not so pleasant reminder to wear your f mask. How common is this side effect, and is there a way to treat it? Before I get into the story, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Alyssa Milano or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. In August 2020, actress and activist Alyssa Milano shared a video of the shocking side effect she was experiencing. Hi everybody, um, I just wanted to show you the amount of hair that's coming out of my head as a result of uh, COVID. This is a detangler brush, my favorite detangler brush. Um, as you can see in there, there is no hair in there right now. One brushing. This is my hair loss from COVID-19. Wear a damn mask. She wasn't the only one experiencing this problem. Alyssa shared an article about a survey done by Survivor Corps, a nonprofit organization hoping to spread education about the virus that said 65.7% of the 1,700 respondents had experienced hair loss. Others shared their experiences with hair loss with Alyssa. Hey you guys, this is real. I had COVID end of June and got out of the hospital July 10th. I started experiencing major hair loss near the end of July. I started collecting it one month ago to show my doctor. It's scary sh my hair is so thin now this is all my hair that has come off my hairbrush in one month i had covid19 a good four months ago i still feel the consequences minimum exercise makes my joints feel like they're burning i feel like i'm going to lose all the hair in my head and the headaches still happen and i lost my job as i'm a seafarer on cruise ships I'm M with you, sis. I ended up shaving my head because I was losing it by chunks. I wish people would stop being so selfish and wear a mask and practice safety. Here in Miami, it's a complete joke. This is just from one day after a shower. I used to have really thick hair and this randomly started happening for about a week now. Had COVID in the beginning of July and this started to happen in the being of October. However, not everyone was convinced by Alyssa's video. This isn't related to COVID. This could be related to your diet, dehydration, etc. But this is not from COVID-19 virus. This also happens every time I shower. For me, it's because I don't drink enough water. Please get your facts straight. You're just getting older now. A lot of things will be drooping and falling off. In October 2020, another woman came forward with a similar story. Stacy Maravola, a woman from Pennsylvania, told NBC News two months after she tested positive for COVID, she noticed her hair was falling out in clumps every time she washed it. She said at first she wasn't concerned, but after another two months, it was still falling out. I've had to limit hair washes because I'm terrified. I'm not a big emotional person, but I can tell you, this has changed me. I cry every single time I take a shower. In February 2021, Becky Bean Cummings told AARP she lost 30% of her hair in a two-month time span. Becky said, It's crazy. I'll be in the shower and it comes out by the handful. On May 1st, TikToker Alexis Noel Candel shared a video showing where she lost hair. Alexis also mentioned she has friends who lost their eyelashes. On May 3rd, TikToker Gabriel showed a video of how much hair she was losing. Three months after COVID, this is my brush every single day, like every single time. A brush my hair. 
A video from April 17th showed TikToker Flamalams sharing how her hair was hurting her. I remember I would complain to my friends that my individual hair follicles would hurt. If I sweep my hair to one side, this entire area would hurt. I could feel each individual hair follicle. Um, also, if I was sleeping and if I turned my head and a hair got caught, I could feel that one area, that smallest area of pain, and it was extreme pain to a point where it would be triggering migraines. A video from February 22nd showed TikToker Casey Asquith discovering a bald spot. A video from January 8th showed TikToker Crystal asking viewers to comply with the COVID guidelines due to the hair loss after effects. Not so pleasant reminder to wear your mask. Unless you want COVID hair or lack of COVID hair, whatever you want to call it. Um, nice receding hairline is happening besides, ooh, yeah, yeah, thinning big time. I don't care about the grays anymore, obviously, I just don't, but um, yeah, if you like the way you look. A video from January 4th showed TikToker Marlene losing a lot of hair in the shower. A video from January 25th showed TikToker Lila shocked after one hair wash. I need answers, you guys. If you've had COVID, is anybody else experiencing like extreme hair loss? This is one shampoo. I've never had hair loss like this. So it's kind of freaking me out. A video from December 16th showed TikToker Clarissa Huerta explaining her experience. I always had thick hair growing up. On July 1st, 2020, I tested positive for COVID-19. For 10 days, I had a fever of 100 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. I started feeling better after three weeks. Two months later, I realized I was suddenly losing a great amount of hair. My hair was becoming uneven. My hair would shed so bad, all the loose hair would get knotted to the point I could not brush my hair. So I decided to cut 12 inches of my hair. But is it really as scary as we think? My friend Brew is here today to help explain the science behind post-COVID hair loss. So, what's the big issue? Some experts weigh in on the topic and may have an answer for us. According to an online support group for COVID-19 survivors, Survivor Core, about a third of their members experienced hair loss. Another study published in The Lancet found that at least one of every five hospitalized with COVID were still losing hair six months after resolution. Hair loss related to COVID is nothing to fear. Shoshana Marman, MD of the Department of Dermatology at New York Medical College, has said that, anytime you have a shock to your system, it can shunt the hair into a shedding phase. The medical term for this condition is called telogen effluvium, which is the excessive shedding of resting or telogen hair after some shock to the system. Although dermatologists are currently researching whether long COVID hair loss is caused by telogen effluvium or by something else, the latter appears to be the best answer yet. Lauren Plock, MD, reassures us that this can happen after other stressful events, like childbirth or an invasive surgery. The reason this happens is that our bodies, when under stress, devote resources to functions that are physiologically more important. Hair loss after COVID is not due to the virus attacking your hair follicles. It's just your body going into survival mode. In fact, most people see an increase in hair loss two to three months after having a high fever or illness, lasting up to six to nine months after the illness. It is important to note that this is not technically hair loss, it's hair shedding. Hair loss means losing your hair permanently, whereas this is just a temporary increase in normal hair shedding. Fortunately for us, no treatment is necessary for most cases of telogen effluvium. We typically lose between 100 to 150 hairs every day, as new hairs push out old ones. And this condition simply expedites that process. As seen in a few videos from these hopeful people, your hair will grow back. Okay, so I just woke up this morning and my hair that's growing back in post-COVID is just on point today. This is not bedhead. This is regrowth from my COVID hair loss. They're all kind of coarse and a little puby and just doing their own thing. I am the Goblin King. So my hair is growing back from COVID, intelligent fluvolium, and besides looking like an 80s new wave band, 
I discovered yesterday that when I don't have a headband on and it's just kind of like this, I look like Will Ferrell in the Lego movie. The most important thing is to determine whether this is an underlying cause of one's hair shedding. If it's caused by a new medication or an iron deficiency, then treatments can be prescribed. But if it's caused by environmental stress, then the shedding is usually limited and will improve with time. To help your hair bounce back, Plock suggests practicing self-care. Eating a balanced diet, taking a daily multivitamin, and exercise will improve hair health. In cases of chronic telogen effluvium, hair shedding which lasts longer than six months, a dermatologist may prescribe medications like minoxidil or platelet-rich plasma scalp injections. Even though we said that COVID hair loss is nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure that is little help to those currently going through it. For many of us, losing our hair is a source of shame, but it certainly shouldn't be. There are a few things you can do to help yourself come to terms with losing hair. Winnipegger Colin Ward, as his hair began to disappear, turned to hats to cover up his receding hairline. I would just try to hide it, he said. I ignored the problem. The solution that helped him was to dive right into the community of proud, bald-headed men like Bruce Willis, Stanley Tucci, Jason Statham, and my personal favorite, suplexing Samoan Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? In Ward's mind, even if he looked terrible, which he didn't, please look at this photo of this handsome man, at least he was in quarantine and he could just wait until it grew back. Unfortunately, there's an even harsher stigma against women and feminine presenting individuals who experience hair loss. And embracing baldness might not always be an option. In that case, there are many companies who specialize in wigs for that express purpose. The Canadian Alopecia Areata Foundation, or C-A-N-A-A-F, has a list of vendors that sell wigs specifically for those with long-term hair loss. In the end, the best recommendation for anyone who thinks their hair may be falling out faster than usual would be to make an appointment with a dermatologist, who would be able to give medical advice specific to your situation. The most important thing we should know about COVID hair loss is that you're not alone. Goodbye! Thank you, Brew. I'm glad things get better in the long run. Overall, it seems hair loss is not a result of COVID, but rather the stress that comes with it, and it may be possible to fight off this hair loss if we prioritize self-care. The best advice Dr. Shoshana Marmom gave is not to stress. While easier said than done, it's nice to know that hair can grow back after COVID. Were you shocked to see the hair loss videos? Let me know in the comments below.